Real brothers, real sisters, welcome to Real Power for Greatness, where you are empowered to walk in your great destiny in Christ without apologies. Royal Power for Greatness is brought to you by Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. It's the world's first global one-on-one -on -one Christian and professional mentorship network for all youth and young adults across the body of Christ worldwide. My name is Wesley Ogude. If you are a youth or young adult anywhere in the world, and you're born again, I am your royal brother. You are my royal brother, you are my royal sister. But if you're wondering there, what does royal brother, royal sister, born again, family of God means, that would suggest to me that perhaps you are yet to become part of God's amazing royal family of believers. I do make a promise to you that I will give you an opportunity that someone gave me several years ago to become part of this amazing family of God. In today's episode of Real Power for Greatness, it is episode 23. Um, I will be discussing with us uh, what I have titled, How to Understand the Language God Speaks, Part 1. Remember, this is a conversation, so please send your questions, thoughts, and comments to me. Now, you can reach me directly and my team at... Um, rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com if you have anything confidential you want to discuss or uh, i will or you have a question please send it to me uh, and we will get, get back to you um, also you can reach out to us through that email address rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com if you want to become part of our team. Anywhere in the world, you can be part of our team. Our team is a global one because it's a global organization and you want to serve and make a difference in the lives of youth and young adults across the body of Christ worldwide. Anywhere you are, just shoot us an email and then we will be able to uh, walk you through how you, be you can become uh, part of our, our team. Um, Today, I also want to rem remind us that please uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notification once we post a new video. We post new videos every other Wednesday by God's grace, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget to share the link with your friends, families, youth and young adults in particular who are in your space. So let's get into today's conversation. So it's a two-part series. This is part one. Okay, the first question we want to answer is, does God really speak, right? Several years ago, um, when I, before I became a Christian, and af even after I became a Christian, it used to bother me, does God really speak? You know, does God speak? Let's address that question. The second question is, what language does God speak? Okay, what language does God speak? Does he speak Chinese language? Does he speak English? Does he speak uh, maybe Greek? maybe Arabic language, what, what, does, what does he speak? What language does God speak? Let's look at it. How do I understand the language God speaks? Those are the questions we'll be answering in these, these two episodes. By way of introduction, when we talk about God speaking to man, we're talking about communication, okay? Communication is the bedrock of every relationship. It, there is no exception to any relationship at all, you know? Um, even with God, there is no exception. Communication. If there has to be a relationship between man and God, there has to be communication. And the communication has to be two ways for communication to be effective. So there you go. God speaks. God has to speak. You know, if he has going to, he's going to have a relationship with us, right? So com without communication, you know, relationship between business partners cannot work, okay? Without communication, relationship between employer and employee cannot work. Without communication, Team members cannot work together in the office, right? Imagine you don't email each other, you don't talk to each other, you don't phone each other. You can't work, right? Without communication, relationship between friends or amongst, you know, family members cannot work, okay? Without communication, relationship between husband and wife cannot work. In the same thing, without communication, the relationship between man and God cannot work. Okay? According to one of my mentors, John C. Maxwell, he said that leadership has a twin sister. Watch this. Her name is communication. So if God has to lead us, guide us in this world, then he, he has to be able to speak to us and we have to be able to understand him and speak to him. Of course, people can wrap their heads around us speaking to God when we pray, but you know, like it used to be for me many years ago, I couldn't wrap my head around God speaking to man, okay? 
God does speak. If you have watched the, the last episode, you will see examples I gave there, how God you know, spoke to me in different ways. God speaks to every believer. We cover that there. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go. Now, how does, does God really speak? Of course, emphatically, God speaks. Let's quickly establish it in scripture, okay? God speaks. If you have been following this channel, you would have heard me say, God said to me, God said to me, and you will keep hearing it, but that is very, very true. And there is evidence, okay, that God speaks. And there's evidence that God spoke to me in every of those instances. You know, I've said it on this channel, you know, my last daughter, you know, every time I went out to go and fellowship with God, whenever, I, you know, sometime when I come back, she will say, Daddy, what did God say to you? Why is she asking? Because she grew up to hear Daddy say, God said this, and she actually saw those things come to pass. So God does speak. But let's anchor it not just on my experience and the experience of billions of believers who hear God every single day and communicate with God. Let's, let's establish it for, from God's word. So three scriptural evidences. Number one, one is that God who created the mouth cannot be dumb. God himself said that. Okay? God who created our ability to speak, he can't be dumb, all right? He's a no-brainer. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 11, just in case someone is doubting, in NKJV, the scripture says, So the Lord said, you can see that God is speaking. So the Lord said to him, said to Moses, so God was communicating with Moses, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the, the mute, that is the dumb person, the deaf, the seen, the blind? Have not I the Lord? God said, I created you with a mouth, with the ability to speak. You think I'm dumb? I can't speak? Okay, that's number one evidence. Number two, God spoke face to face with Moses. We saw that in scripture. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, NKJV, the scripture says, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Did you see that? And he, he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. We also know if you read the book of Joshua, eventually God was speaking to Joshua too, mouth to mouth. Okay? So God speaks. God spoke to people. God still speaks today. Okay, number three. God still speaks today in diverse ways. In Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2, here's what the scripture says, NKJV, okay? God, who at various times, in various ways, you see that, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heirs of, of all things, through whom he also he made the world. So you see that the Bible says God spoke in diverse way. God has also spoken to us. Now he still speaks to us this day. So the number two question we want to answer is what language does God speak? What language does God really speak? The God of the universe. What language does he speak? Does he speak, does he speak Nigerian language? Does he, does he speak African language? Does he speak Japanese language? What's, what language? But before we go into that, let's quickly take a break and get a, a quick message from RBRS. Don't go away. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith, and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS.
Welcome back. So we're trying to answer the question, what language does God speak? Again, what language does God speak? Does God speak English? Does God speak French? Does God speak Arabic? Does God speak? Yeah, God speaks all languages. God speaks all languages. Why? Because he's the one that created all the languages. He understands all the languages. God speaks the language in which you read his word. God speaks the language in which you communicate with him. He can communicate with you in that. He speaks the language that in, in which you read his word, the language in which you pray. That's the language God speaks, okay? But beyond language, okay? Let's talk about five common languages God speaks. Five common languages God speaks. In this part one of the message, we'll cover two, okay? We'll cover two. Now let me tell you the five common languages God speaks, okay? God speaks primarily through his written word. So that word can be written in any language. God speaks through. If you can read that language, God speaks to you through that language. If your Bible is a French language and you are praying in French, God speaks to you in French because that's what you can understand. I understand English, for example, so God, I read English Bible, so God speaks through the language in which I read his word. Okay, that's it. This used to be a big deal for me when I first received Jesus Christ. You know, um, number two, God speaks the language of divine illumination. Divine illumination. We get into it. Number three, God speaks the language of the small, still voice of the Holy Spirit. He speaks that language. Number four, God speaks the language of his messengers. And number five, God speaks the language of divine circumstances. Now, let me try to unpack this for you. Now, in, um, in this first part, I will cover the, the first two. God speaks primarily through his word. And then God speaks, you know, the language of divine illumination. The other three will cover in the next part so that we can keep uh, the conversation short. Okay? So God speaks primarily through his word. Now, the Bible, the Bible that you carry, that Bible that you and I read as believers, and if you're an unbeliever, the Bible that you see out there is the word of God. It's not just the letter of that Bible, but that, word, that Bible is inspired. Inspired. Not only inspired is a word that has the breath of God in it. It's living. It's living. Okay? God speaks primarily through his written word, the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16 to 17, NKJV, the scripture says, remember, just watch this, all scripture, not some, not most, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be complete and, and, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the scripture, that is primarily the way God speaks. In fact, all the other ways that God speaks, right, must conform with his word. If not, trash it. Okay? So... For example, Psalm 119, uh, 105, your word is a lamp for my steps, it lights the path before me. So God's word directs us, can instruct us, can correct us, and you know, the, what God's word tells us about the beginning of the world, the end of the world, what will happen, death, all the answers that, that you know, science does not have question to, God's word, they are in God's word, okay? God, so God speaks primarily through the word, through the Bible. Number two, God speaks the language of divine illumination. What do we mean by that, okay? Every child of God understands this, who has been in the faith, working with God for, for, for some time. You see, you read the Bible today, the same passage you read today, you can read that passage tomorrow and something else, a new understanding will come. That same passage has spoken, you know, different things to different people all over the world over time. So, um, you, know, um, you know, Smith Wigglesworth said that God's word, God's word, right? God's word has one meaning, but it's, it has unlimited application, okay? 
it has unlimited application. So the Holy Spirit can illuminate the word, illuminate our heart. What does that look like? I will give you a personal example very shortly. Okay? But the way the Holy Spirit does that, and um, when God speaks through his word, is that it, it, at times it will just look like, you know, as if a particular passage will just jump at you. It will make a strong impression on you. It will stay on your mind and you can, you can hardly, you know, shake it off you. God is speaking to you about, from that passage. Right? That's the way it works. Okay? So how will you know what God is speaking to you? As you meditate on that word. You think about Meditating just means thinking about it. As you ruminate about that word. And that word, God can now begin to use that word to, to point to certain things about your life. And of course, the Holy Spirit within you will begin to help you to interpret that word, to apply Apply it to your situation. I will give you a life example shortly. But let me quickly walk you through the scripture. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, NKJV. The scripture says, the eyes of your understanding. Can you see now? Our understanding has eyes. <laughs> the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It's talking about our spirit man. Okay, as I'm speaking to you now, okay, I'm, I'm a spirit being, okay, I have a soul and I live in a body. What you are seeing across the, the, this, this screen, this video, is my body you are seeing. You can't see my spirit. But God makes connection with my spirit and because his word is also life, when God's word, okay, God, the Holy Spirit illuminates God's word, it sparks something in my spirit, that's what we mean by divine illumination. And God will begin to expand that thing, right? And begin to apply it to your circumstance. Again, I will give you a, a quick example here. Okay? So the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. The moment the moment your eyes of your understanding is enlightened, you will know, you will know the hope of his calling. Okay, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Okay, let me give you an example. Several years ago, I was um, in my early 20s. Okay, so I, I started feeling um, affection towards a particular classmate of mine who today, you know, became my wife. We've been married to the glory of Jesus Christ for about 29 years, okay? This month, January, on the um, 22nd of January, 2023, will be to the glory of God Almighty, 29 years that we have been married, okay? So, um, so several years ago, before I started approaching my wife uh, to say that I was going to marry her, uh, I was, as I was getting, um, you know, I've drawn to her, developing affection to her. Then I started praying. I started praying. I started seeking God's face. And then um, eventually I got convinced that she was going to be my wife. Okay? So I approached her. If you have been watching some other videos we have talked about, I've talked about how God leads, how God speaks, and all of those kind of things. So if you have not, please go to them and watch it. So I got a conviction that this was my wife. But something happened. Now, because my wife got converted from a, a Muslim home, okay, the mom and the, and the dad were non-Christians and they were so upset that she gave her life to Christ. So her dad in particular did not really like it and um, I was told then that the dad was very unhappy and things like that. So I was told that, you know, I shouldn't try it. You know, to even try to marry her because they predicted or thought that something, you know, something spooky or something evil may happen. I was told that some people who got married in that family to somebody that, you know, the father was not happy about that marriage. So many terrible things happened and things like that. So obviously it would be very disturbing to anybody. So I went to pray and I went to spend time with God. I was reading the scripture. 2 Kings chapter 19 from verse 11 to 13. Let me read it out to you. Look, okay, this was the servant of an As the army of an Assyrian, okay, a messenger who was threatening the king of Israel then. Look at what he said. He said, look, you have heard that the kings of Assyria, the kings of Assyria, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by utterly destroying them and shall you be delivered have the gods of the nations delivered those whom my fathers have destroyed okay 
Then he started mentioning them. Okay? Gozan and Haran and, and Rezef and the people of Eden who were in Telassa. Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Apad and the king of the city of she Shevin, Hena and Eva? Okay, you read a, a, a passage like this. This was the passage I was reading. Now, in this passage, what was going on was that um, this guy was telling the king of Israel that, look, you better surrender because my father, the king, has conquered all of these other territories, conquered all of these kings, and their gods could not save them. So you better, you better, you are going to be conquered as well. But the difference is that this person is talking to trusted in Jehovah, the Almighty God. Can you get the point? That was the story. So look at the story and my circumstance. Here was my circumstance as a child of God, born again. God, the, the same Almighty, is leading me to a lady. And they are telling me that the mother, the, or, or the father rather, uh, you know, something happened, something happened, something happened. Uh, and, and they are using that to threaten me. So I was meditating on this. And I was thinking, well, God, it looks like, you know, in this case, the case of this guy is different from the other guy that their gods could not. As I was meditating, I heard the Holy Spirit say in me, within me, he said, yours shall be different. Yours shall be different. In other words, my own experience, if I marry that my wife, will be different. I heard it meditating on this word. That is an example of how God illuminates. The moment I heard that, <laughs> All of my fear and doubt and everything went away. I was so bold and confident. I went to my sister-in-law. The next time she raised the issue of, oh, well, we don't want you to marry her. Even my wife then was dilly-dallying. She's like, okay, you know, I'm not sure. I just told them, don't worry, this is my wife. I'm going nowhere. Why? Because I saw the scripture and the Holy Spirit illuminated it and spoke to me. That's the way it works. And so, guess what? What was the outcome? Of course, you know. My sister-in-law said, oh, you, you, you can't marry this lady or this, 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 this happened. I said, I either marry her or I marry her. She said, I, didn't, I don't understand. I said, well, what I'm saying to you is that there is no going back. I'm going to marry that lady. Lo and behold, I married the lady. And God said, yours will be different. To the glory of Jesus and Jesus alone, our own marriage has been completely different. We had children when we needed to have children. It's been like heaven on earth. God speaks the language of illumination and that's how it works okay so let's go quickly now so what language does God speak we've talked about the language that God speaks so how do I understand the language God speaks we're going to cover that in part two of this message I'm going to wrap up now um, now, I did promise that if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I will give you an opportunity. Now, if you are there and you have been listening to this conversation, you don't know Jesus Christ. You can't speak with certainty the way you are hearing me talk about him. He's, a, he's, an, he's an amazing father. He's so real. So real. But you don't have that kind of assurance. I can lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ today. It will be my honor and great privilege to do that. It was on July 19, 1987. My life changed forever when someone gave me this opportunity. So if you're there or you backslided and you want to be restored, you've not been living the life, you've been up and down, you confess today and go back to sin the next day, God is not done with you. I want you to bow down your head and please repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe you died for my sin and on the third day you rose again. I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus name. If you pray that prayer sincerely I believe with all my heart without a shadow of doubt that you got born again and I want to welcome you warmly that you have become my royal brother and my royal sister. I want you to get into a Bible believing church. In this kingdom there is no orphan. Everyone belongs to a local church, including myself. So get into a Bible-believing church. I also want you to go to our website, www.royalyouthforchrist.com. 
click on RBRS, then RBRS com convert, complete that form, and someone from our team will be in touch with you. We want to be part of your amazing journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to our next part two of this. So don't forget, um, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget two weeks from now, we're going to post another video where we continue this conversation. Until then, I remain your royal brother, Wesley Ogude. I love every one of you. God bless you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS. Thank you.